Hello, this is Chris from CSS Tricks with my first ever screencast, podcast, videocast, whatever. Um, forgive me if it gets a little shaky here, if I can't explain things quite f as fluidly as I'd like. Uh, hopefully that will get better with time. Uh, I get the question fairly often, how do you turn a mock-up, uh, in this case a Photoshop mock-up, into CSS and HTML? Uh, it's kind of a big question. I... It, the answer to that question is different for every website, pretty much, you know. What I'd like to do here is look at this mock-up that I made just for this and, and convert it into HTML and CSS. Uh, but before we do that, let's, you know, you need to think a little bit about the mock-up and about how it's going to behave as a website. That's kind of the real question. So you can, here's just, you know, just the Firefox starter web page. There's stuff here. We got some stuff in the upper left. We got stuff in the upper right. We got a big main content area here. When we resize the browser window, some of it stays where it is. Some of it stays centered. Some of it hangs out with the right side of the page. You know, that's just what browser windows are. They're different sizes. They get bigger and smaller. The text can get bigger and smaller. They're more of a dynamic place than Photoshop is. You know, when I resize my Photoshop window, it doesn't go anywhere. It's a fixed pixel width kind of environment. So you need to start with a little thinking about how this mock-up's going to behave as a website. So we can do that now, and it's pretty simple. We're just looking at it. This uh, red bar up here, the header area, a uh, big wide red bar hits the outsides of my Photoshop document here. We'll probably want that area to just extend indefinitely, regardless of the size of the browser window. That'll just, you know, grow. Similarly with the footer down here, that just, it hits the bottom of the page, it hits the right, hits the left. We'll just have that big red area just expand as wide as it needs to be for the website. All the rest of this content here looks like it would probably be good centered. Uh, we could make it tuck up to the left if we wanted to, but I think it's just kind of nice when content is centered generally. So all this main content, even the stuff in the footer, let's just center it in the browser window. And then we just have some content here. We have a little chunk here that sticks into the main content and a sidebar that hangs out to the right. That's just what we have. And it's kind of going to be an expandable centered website. So that's what we're going to build. Uh, so like I just kind of explained it with words, that's, I hope, what we're going to do with CSS, too. This is a header. This is navigation. This is main content. This is a sidebar. This is a footer. That's how we're going to attempt to write our HTML, you know. That's semantics. So let's take a minute here and get started doing that. All right. So here's the folder for this particular project. We got an index file, a CSS file, an empty images folder here, and then just some other source material and my Photoshop mock-up here. Everything related to this project all in one place. And I already got open here two separate windows. Uh, here's the HTML file with all this basic structure, like the page declaration and basic body structure, and then a simple CSS file with a little bit of a, a reset and a font reset and uh, whatever there. So. Let's drag this HTML file onto a browser so we can preview it blank, just like we expect. And let's get started building this thing. Uh, I can see, you know, we already decided that this red bar is going to extend all the way right and left as wide as the browser window is going to be. So I'm thinking that's going to be a good thing to apply as a background image uh, to the body itself. So. If we think in a repeating X image, I could just grab a little slice of it here, something like that, and export it. Ping is a good choice here because of the solid colors, no gradients. It's kind of like GIF, but a little better in this case. 268 bytes. That's pretty good. So let's save that and call it. Let's see. body background and then 
go back so we don't lose it. And apply that background image that we just made to the background of the whole site. We're going to repeat it on the X, Y's at the top. And for the rest of the area, actually, since it's all a solid color, let's sample this color and grab the hex code out of Photoshop for it. Save our CSS and reload the page. And there we go. We have that top bar image applied to the body of the website that just stretches as far as it needs to stretch. Pretty good start there, I think. So let's grab the header and continue with that, and maybe that's as far as we might get in podcast one here. Um, it looks like the font of this navigation here is Avenir, which is not a web font, but I'm thinking the navigation would probably be best to do with some kind of web font. So let's just turn that off. Let's see if this is organized well enough that that's going to be easy. Oh, absolutely. So let's see, do we have some guides set up? We do. We can just cut this whole area out, making sure to get enough of this shadow here and drop that image centered, and that'll be our header that we can work with. So. Once again, let's get out that crop tool, crop it out, and then find some kind of export that's going to be good for it size-wise and quality-wise. C-Ping, that's just not doing it. I'm not sure what the quality of this podcast is going to be like, but it's really kind of dither, dithery, and I don't know. Actually, it almost looks kind of cool in this case, but usually it's bad news. I'm thinking because of the gradient and because of the variety of colors and stuff that JPEG is going to be our best bet here. And unfortunately, probably not going to get away with too small of a file size. It's 62K there, and it's getting to be sort of okay. We might be able to do a better job, but let's just leave it at that for now. Let's call that the header background. <clears throat> and once again we accidentally save it on ourselves back back up in the history okay so now we're gonna need you know not just a body but some actual HTML here to apply this header so since really it's just navigation up there I think we might be able to get away with literally just an unordered list here so Let's call it an unordered list of the style nav. And eventually there's going to be some list items in here. But let's not worry about that just yet. And in our CSS, we can declare a UL with an ID of nav with some specifics about what we got there. So let's take a look at that graphic we just made. If we get info on it, we can see it's 800 by 236. So I think we should be able to specify exactly those pixel dimensions. And be OK there. And to make sure it's centered, it's the old centering trick. Give it that background of the image we just made. It's a JPEG. No repeat in this case, and doesn't really need a background color because that size of the image is as big as the block we're giving it. Let's see if that does it. Oh, it sure did. Pretty good start there, huh? See how it stays centered? Yeah, it's that little nugget. That's weird. Maybe that happened in the Photoshop file somehow. Anyway, we'll get that fixed up and then continue building this awesome website in Podcast 2.